It was negatively impacting her performance. Her workouts weren't as good. Her energy levels were really low and she was unable to lose fat. So as soon as we ended up incorporating a little bit more fat, she was able to start losing weight again. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna be debunking the myth that if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. But before I start, you guys know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, ding, ding, ding. And if you don't wanna watch the entire video, I will be including timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to the section that you want. Now, onto the topic at hand. The myth that if you eat fat, you're going to get fat stems from the fact that when it comes to weight loss or weight gain, it's going to come down to calories in versus calories out, and fat is going to be more calorie dense than protein or carbohydrates. Basically, Basically, if you're in a caloric deficit, you're going to lose weight. If you're in a caloric surplus, you're going to gain weight. And if the amount of calories that you take in is equal to that of your total daily energy expenditure, your weight is going to stay exactly the same. And now that we know that, how many calories exactly are in one gram of fat? Well, when it comes to fat, there are going to be nine calories in one gram of fat. Whereas with regard to protein and carbohydrate, there are only going to be four calories in one gram of each of those. So that is one of the reasons why a lot of people are afraid of fat. And the truth is, there's no reason to be afraid of fat, you need it to survive. If you avoid fat entirely, your body is not going to be able to function optimally. So you do need to get it and you should not be afraid of it. With regard to fats, basically fatty acids are going to be the building blocks of all fats and oils, and they come in different shapes and sizes. And just one of the reasons why getting an adequate amount of fatty acids in your diet is going to be so important is that fatty acids are going to be the main components of your membranes that surround all of your cells. So with regard to fats, what exactly are some of their functions? Well, one of the things with regard to fat is that it is going to help you to absorb your fat soluble vitamins. If you are lacking in fat, you are not going to be able to get an adequate amount of your vitamin A, D, E, and K because A, D, E, and K, those are your fat soluble vitamins. Whereas all your other vitamins, those are water soluble. So if you are depriving yourself of fat, then what can happen is that you may become deficient in vitamins A, D, E, and K. Another function of fat is that it is going to provide insulation and shock absorption for your body. And depending on the various lengths of the fatty acid chain, this will also alter the function of the fatty acid. Basically, if you have a saturated fatty acid with less than 16 carbon atoms, that is going to be what is going to provide you with energy, calories, and it's going to generate heat. Whereas if you have a saturated fatty acid between 16 to 18 carbon atoms, generally that type of fatty acid is also going to generate energy, but it's also going to help to construct cell membranes and make unsaturated fatty acids. Another thing is that it's also going to be stored in your fat tissue to be used later for energy if it is needed. With regard to the different types of fat, we basically have saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. There are a bunch of other ones, but those are the three that I want to discuss for this particular video. With regard to saturated fat, saturated fat is going to be fat molecules that has no double bonds between carbon molecules. These are generally going to be solid at room temperature, and they're going to be found most abundant in animal products. So you're going to find these in things like like butter, fatty meats, and also dairy products. Next, we have monounsaturated fats. The reason they are called monounsaturated fats, the word mono should be a little bit of a clue. These ones over here, they are going to be a fat molecule that has one double bond located in it. And these ones are going to be typically liquid at room temperature, and you will find them mostly in nuts, seeds, and also in oils. So you'll find them in things like avocados, olive oil, and also in things like almonds. Next, we have polyunsaturated saturated fat, poly, multi. So this should give you an indicator of the double bonds that it has. A polyunsaturated fat is going to be a fat molecule that has more than one double bond. And typically this is also going to be liquid at room temperature, just like with a monounsaturated fat. With regard to polyunsaturated fats, this is going to be most abundant in things like plant-based oils. So if you are having something like soybean oil or corn oil, you will find a lot of polyunsaturated fats in them. With regard to polyunsaturated fats, ideally you wouldn't want to consume too many polyunsaturated fats because they can lead to issues with inflammation. And one more thing with regard to polyunsaturated fats is you can further subdivide this into different categories and a couple of other polyunsaturated fats. There are going to be essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids, the word essential should let you know that these are fatty acids that our bodies are not able to create on their own. Rather, we need to get them from our diet. And these are going to be things like alpha linolenic acid, which is a form of omega-3 and linoleic acid, which is a form of omega-6. 
With regard to omega-3s, we also have EPA and DHA. With regard to EPA and DHA, these are going to be found most abundant when it comes to fish and fish products. And with regard to omega-3s versus omega-6s, generally omega-3s are going to be anti-inflammatory, whereas omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Even though omega-6s are pro-inflammatory, we do still need them because if we don't have any pro-inflammatory things in our body, if you were to do something like a sprain an ankle, you're not going to have anything that is going to allow you to swell that ankle up and provide stability for that particular area in your body. So even though omega-6s are pro-inflammatory, we do need a little bit of them in our diet. And with regard to the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, ideally in our diet, we would like to get a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s. The problem is that most of our diet is composed primarily of omega-6s and we do not get enough of omega-3s. This is why a lot of people have issues with inflammation. Yes, I said omega-6s are good. You do need to get some of them, but if you get too much, this can lead to a lot of issues with inflammation. So you would want to balance that out by having foods that are more rich in omega-3s and trying to minimize your consumption of omega-6 foods. And with regard to omega-3s versus omega-6s, generally, if you consume things like grass-fed meats and wild-caught fish, the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s is going to be much higher. Whereas if you get conventionally raised foods or a lot of grains and vegetables, the ratio of omega-6s is going to be much higher than omega-3s. So that is why it's very, very good if you can afford to do organic food, because if you do get grass-fed meats and wild-caught fish, you can balance out that ratio, ratio between your omega-3s and your omega-6s. And now that we have a basic understanding of some of the basic functions and different types of fat, how much should we be consuming in our diet? Well, this is going to be dependent on a person-to-person -person basis. Basically, when it comes to your fat intake, what you want to do is experiment with different ratios of fat and see what exactly works for you. One thing that you could do is try going on a low-fat diet, try going on a moderate fat diet, try going on a high fat diet. Do each of those for several weeks, keep a food log, see exactly how you feel, and whichever one makes you feel your best, that is going to be your ideal fat intake. So what you can do is a month of 20% fat, a month of 40, a month of 60, a month of 80. Do each of those, see exactly how you feel on each of them. How's your mental clarity? How's your energy? How are your joints feeling? If everything is feeling optimal when you are at 60% of your calories coming from fat, then that should be what you are consuming. The general recommendation is going to be 20 to 35%, but for a lot of people, this is not enough fat for their diet. For me personally, I find that when I get 80% of my calories coming from fat, that is optimal for my body because when I get about 80% of my calories coming from fat, my mental clarity is great. I have great energy to get my workouts done and I have no issues whatsoever with regard to information, insomnia, any of those. So for me, 80% is great. If I were to drop down to the recommended daily allowance of 20 to 35%, I would feel terrible. I would have really low energy, my mental clarity would be non-existent, and I would have a lot of trouble with regard to my sleep quality. So for me, 80% is great, and the recommended allowance is going to be very, very detrimental for my health. And also a lot of the patients that I work with, same thing is true. A lot of them, they do much better on a higher fat diet. Not all of them, but quite a few of them do. And I'm going to give a little bit of a story about why exactly fat is going to be good and why you don't need to be afraid of it. This was about five or six years ago. I was working with this bikini competitor and I ended up writing up a meal plan for her to follow. And when she was doing the meal plan, she was not taking any of my fat recommendations because she was terrified of fat. So what happened was there was this one girl that trained at the gym that we were training at and she liked the way that girl's body looked. So she had asked her what she was doing and that girl told her to avoid all fat and she basically dropped her fat down to zero. She did this without telling me. So I ended up doing her calipers on a weekly basis just to make sure that she was on track to compete in the show and she was not losing any fat whatsoever for a couple of weeks and I was curious about it I asked her what she was doing she said that she was following the diet and I suspected that she was not following the diet because if she was she should have been seeing results so what I got her to do was take pictures of every single thing that she was eating and send it to me and as soon as she sent me the pictures right away I knew that she was not eating any of the fat that I told her to eat and she was also minimizing a lot of the other calories from the other foods that I had recommended because she had that false mentality that if a little bit of a calorie restriction is good, then more must be better. But in her case, it was very detrimental because it was negatively impacting her performance. Her workouts weren't as good. Her energy levels were really low and she was unable to lose fat. So as soon as we ended up incorporating a little bit more fat, she was able to start losing weight again. And one of the things with regard to that is her competition suffered immensely because she did not place very well at all in her very first show. Whereas the second time around, we were very, very strict with her fat intake and all of the 
different macronutrients. And in that show, she actually won first place. So the first show where she completely tried to eliminate all of the fat, she ended up coming in, I believe it was sixth place. It was either between sixth and eighth place. And then the second show that she did, she ended up winning that bikini competition by adding more fat into her diet. Now, obviously the fat wasn't the only factor that she won the competition. It also had to do with her training and the rest of her diet, but that should illustrate the point that just because you consume fat, it's not going to make you fat because if that was the case, then she should have won the first show and she should have placed very poorly in the second show. But the opposite was actually true. She paced, paced poorly in the first show and she won her second show. So fat is going to be very important. And if you eliminate it completely, it can have detrimental health effects for you. So don't be afraid of fat, consume it, Confine in terms of how much to consume, find what exactly what's right for you. Keep a food journal, try those different ratios, but that's pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.